things. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to be looking at a different thing. We're going to be looking at intentionality. We're going to be looking at becoming a team player. We've been talking about that. How many of you saw the game last night? Oh, yeah. Team, that's what teams do. Uh, I don't know, there's something about Tennessee where they only kick in like the third quarter. But uh, they did fantastic. I think they switched sides on the, when third quarter, after the second half, they just, the teams switched their plays. But anyway, that was a really good game. Matter of fact, my wife had another vest for me to wear this morning. I said, no, nah, got to go orange this morning. And I saw, I pulled this out more of this this morning. You know, we've been talking about playing together as a team, working together as a team, succeeding as a team. And, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, I've done a lot of studies on church growth. And it, uh, it's amazing to read the history of the growth of the church. Of all the things that I've read about churches that grow, there are several common threads that I see in each of the people that write about these things. I'm going to mention two of them. Number one, the first one is the growth started with a vision. Second, those who were responsible for helping the church to grow, all the members, became aware of that purpose that the church had and they began working accordingly towards that goal that they had set. In other words, they were intentional with the things that they did that would eventually help the church become what God intended it to be. You know, I've never read an article that said this. Never read an article say, you know, it's the craziest thing. We built a church, opened the door, thousands of people just poured in. All of a sudden, thousands of people started coming in from nowhere. And top it all off, all of a sudden, everybody's needs were met. Never read that before in church growth. Doesn't happen that way. When we become intentional, we plan to minister to the singles. We plan to minister to our seniors. We plan to minister to the divorced and the, the, the addicted. And, and because of an intentional plan or vision, one by one you begin to reach out and grow. How and why? Well, Matthew chapter 25 says this. He says, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Intentional. They did this on purpose. So what does it mean to be intentional? It means to work with a purpose, making every action count. It's about focusing on doing the right things moment by moment, day by day, and then following through with them in a consistent way. Churches that grow are intentional. They aren't scattered and haphazard. They know what they're doing, why they're doing it, and who they're doing it for. They know those things. In order for us to be successful in what we can be, we need to be intentional people who are able to remain focused and, and produce people who make every action count. So I'm going to give you some things this morning in order to live with intent. How are you going to live an intentional life? Number one, you need to have a purpose worth living for. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, the King James Version says, where there is no vision, people perish. What is your purpose? What's your plan? What's your vision? What do you see for yourself? What do you see for your family? What do you see for your career? What do you see for this church? What do you see? What's your vision? What's your purpose? You know, I heard a story about one time about a guy that was riding down the road. He looked over and everywhere he saw there was these bullseyes. And right in the middle of his bullseyes was a shot. It was amazing. I mean, all over the place. There were billboards and places. And I hope the lights don't go out again. And, and uh, you know, they, all these things, there's bullseyes everywhere. And he was seeing these bullseyes, and uh, this guy thought, man, this must be an amazing marksman. So he, he pulled off the road, he went to town, and they said, I need to meet this guy. I mean, this guy hits dead center in the bullseye every time. They directed him to the town moron. He went to the guy, and he says, how do you do that? He said, well, I do it a little different than everybody else. He says, I shoot first, and then I draw the bullseye. He says, I've learned this, that if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. That's so true in life. If you aim at nothing, you'll surely hit it. In our Christian life, we should live with a purpose of the church in mind. To reach the lost, 
to seek and save that which is lost, to encourage and strengthen the saved. When's the last time you did either of those? Who are you working on, trying to convert, trying to study with? Who are you encouraging by inviting them to your home? Who are you encouraging by inviting them to our services? Who are you inver- encouraging by inviting them next week? By the way, next week we have the, 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 the uh, hayride and, and, and low country bowl. And uh, I, I'm thinking about next year. We talked about a talk with Josh this morning, just throwing an idea. Maybe next year we might even do it as a homecoming Sunday next year and, and make it even more intentional. Have a homecoming Sunday, have Sunday morning services, have a meal, and maybe have the hay ride right after services. Maybe we can get some, our old folks back. But we need to be intentional what we're doing. What are you doing? Who are you encouraging? When was the last time you hosted a devotional in your home? Had a college student over for a meal? I remember when we were in Russia, we had a couple of college students that came to Russia, and, and these guys sacrificed everything to be missionaries for a summer. They were from Pepperdine University, and they were there, some of the sweetest kids you ever met. They were not, they were not, their, their major was not in ministry. Well, matter of fact, one of them was, went to MIT as an engineer, and another one went to, they, were, they, they weren't studying religion at all, but they just thought this was an opportunity. They spent the summer in Russia. Gather and I would have them over once a week for a meal. Those boys would scrape the pan. She'd make a, a pie. They would scrape the pan. I teased them. I said, you know, they because they lived off of nothing. And, and those boys, they would, uh, they would come. I'd say, y- y- I know what y'all do. Y'all have pea soup. And every once in a while, y'all throw a pea in. I mean, that's, you know, they just didn't have that much. Well, our college students, you know, sometimes, not, you know, they don't have a lot of money to spend, but why not have them over sometime and invite them and tell them, hey, you know, you've been praying for them while they're at school, those kinds of things. Took advantage of the opportunity to invite a neighbor into your home because you're hosting a, we're hosting a church activity. You know, a lot of people have a thousand reasons why they can't do what they want to when all they need is a reason why they can. They just need to understand what they can do. Find that one reason why you can do something that will help God's kingdom to expand and then get at it. I'll give you one. Colossians 1 verse 16. All things were created through him and for him. And because I was created for God and his glory, I should serve him if for no other reason than that. What's your purpose? Find it and then begin to live for it. Incorporate in your life in every way, what you can do for God. You know, give out invitations for, for special activities like, like the hayride that's coming up or the trunk or treat that's coming up or some activity we have going on or just say, you know, hey, I want you to come to church. But, but use these things. In order for you to become a more intentional as a part of a congregation, you must first find out what your purpose is. Then know your strengths and weaknesses. Know your strengths and weaknesses. People like to do what they're good at. Play to your strengths. Rekindle your passions. Renew your, your, your energies. If, you'll, if you know yourself and what you do well, then you can direct your time and energy in an intentional way. Let me give you an example. You know, we mentioned this morning, we have our, our Devo and Soul are making uh, pillowcases. They're making these pillowcases. Let me show you what they've done. They've made a hundred of these things, guys. Look at them. I mean, some of them, that's pretty bright right there. But look at these. I mean, they're making these things, and they're making them for the, the flood victims. And they're going to send them over, and they're asking you to bring, by the way, some blankets. I mean, you might not be able to do much, but maybe you could buy a blanket, a twin size, a, a, a queen size, or whatever size. Bring a blanket to, a, and do that. But look at these. They've been making these. I mean, they've got 100 of them. We're going to send them to a church in, in East Tennessee. And uh, I like this one. This was the manly one. Uh, and uh, I, I told her that we're going to show this one. She didn't want me to have this one. But anyway, uh, but look at these. Colorful and all these different things. They can pack some of the stuff that they've got, they need in there, but then put a warm blanket in it because it's getting that time of year. We've had un- unseasonably cool weather. Look at that. I mean, they're just using their abilities, the things that they know they can do, the things that they can do. They're doing it for the cause of Christ. Can you imagine a church in East Tennessee taking these to some family in need there, what a, what a message that will send to those families. And who knows who might be converted because of a pillowcase. You might not be able to do everything, but you can do something. 
You know, this week, you know, we've been in the hospital all week, and Galen went in Sunday afternoon. Actually, she went during church, and uh, I went out at, at, after church and stayed with her. And Thursday, I went out to my car, and out in my car, and every door in the parking lot there was a, just this little flower thing stuck in the doorknob handle. And, uh, and it had this, God cares for you. So turn all your worries to him, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. I don't know who did this, but what a great idea. Simple idea. You know, you youth group, you know, you're looking for some kind of work activity. Why not take something like this? I would add, though, from your friends at the Linary Church of Christ and put our address on there, <laughs> you know, but uh, and maybe, you know, go to Walmart. Look how many people are struggling in the world today and you know, they're struggling with things. Man, just have a look. Like, find that in your doorknob. That was on every door in the parking lot there at the hospital. What a great idea. Somebody might not have had a lot of talents to do a lot of things. But this little, they, they kind of did, you know what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. He says, I planted, Apollo water, but God gave the increase. Paul had his part to do. Apollos had his part to do. And when they did that, God did his part as well. And it worked. That's what I'm saying is we need to be intentional about the things that we do. I, I have my part to do. You know, a little ability to preach. You have your part to do, whether it's repairing the building or giving a flower or sending a card or our or care and compassion group, you know, sent a card this week and several of you came by and visited and that kind of thing. You know, you might not be able to do things. Maybe teach a Bible class or a woman's class leader. or If you will do your part, use your strengths. God will continue to provide more and more increase to the body. But it takes everybody. It takes us all. Increase comes as a result of more effort. And more effort comes as a result of more effort. Recognize your strengths and weaknesses. Recognize the weaknesses and do what you can do to become stronger in those areas. Recognize your strength and allow God to have glory as a result of what you can do. Thirdly, prioritize your responsibilities. Matthew 6, 31 through 33 says this, Therefore do not worry, saying, What ye shall eat, or what we will drink, or what we will wear. For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Why aren't we doing more for God and his church? Because our priorities may be not where they ought to be. In order to live a balanced life, you've got to give attention to the areas that mean the most to you. Where you're giving your attention is what you see is most important. God, your spouse, your children, your job, me time, friends. If one doesn't get the attention it needs, the others go out of balance. You say, well, I can't get this area under control of my life. I, I, you may, maybe your finances. Well, how, what are you giving? How much are you giving? Well, you and my family, how much time are you spending with them? Well, with myself, do you have a hobby? Are you eating right? Are you, are, are, are you, are you dieting? Are you doing the things you need to take care of yourself? In order for me to live with the intent to serve the king, and be a productive worker within his kingdom, I must prioritize my responsibilities, put first things first. And then I need to commit myself to long-term achievements. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says this, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Run with endurance. Listen, if we're going to be successful, we don't just ease into it. We have to endure some things. We have to put up with some things. We have to make some effort. It, it takes effort to be able to accomplish some. Hang in there. Commit to the plan. We can't just look at today. We must look at tomorrow, five years from now, 20 years from now, and ask, what do we want to be? What do we want to be as a church? What do we want to be as a family? What do we want to be personally? And we must start working towards where we want to go 5, 20, 30 years down the line. 
Most victories in life are achieved through small incremental wins sustained over time. You know, we've got great facilities here at Line Area. And, and, and what do we see doing of it? You know, I woke up at 1 o'clock this morning. I was telling Josh, well, I woke up at 1 o'clock this morning. And uh, I, I guess, you know, I'm able to think about other things now that Gail is home. And what my, my popped in my mind, well, you know, we need to do something with the building. And uh, so I, I got a whole list of things that I got on my phone that I made a list at 1 o'clock in the morning uh, on my phone of things that we need to do and accomplish some things here at the building. But here, but one of the things is, you know, we, 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 we spent, what, a ton of money on that floor in the gymnasium. Why aren't we using it? So I've come up with a plan. I'm going to put it to you elders on Wednesday night. But I've got a plan on how we can start, uh, you know, using it and set it up and have pickleball on a regular basis here and get people from the community to come to our building because when we get them to our building, we're breaking down some walls. But there's some other things we could be doing. We've got to start working today towards the things we want five, 20 years down the line. Again, we've got, we've got, to, so I want to see us use our facilities for this community. A full auditorium. But wouldn't it be great to see this building so packed that we got to knock, you know, this building was built to where we could knock these back walls out and put a, 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 a balcony up there? It's a shame we hadn't done it. But the reason we hadn't done it because we hadn't got them here to do it. Let's do it. I mean, that needs to be our goal. We need to set that as our goal. We need to, you know, like we talked about adding to our staff. Wouldn't it be great if we had a staff of 10, 20 people here at the church? Or maybe we started a, a second campus in Cumberland County of the church wouldn't that be great but we get there one step at a time I want to be a part of that I mean don't you I'd like to see the church do that I become a part of what this church will be by committing my time and my talent and my ideas to what we're doing now how can we make a vision come true? By committing ourselves to a long-term achievement of God's family right here at Lineary. How intentional are you? How intentional are you? Are, are you, uh, as you proceed through this life as a Christian, do you have a plan and a purpose for everything that you do? Do you know where this church is going and why we're doing it and where we're going? Do you know that? You know, sometimes... A lot of churches will get, they're just kind of you doing what they're doing because that's what they did. And they get in a rut. God forbid that we should ever get in a rut. We should always be trying to go forward. Or are you simply just drifting down the stream of life? Here's your take home points. To become more intentional, here's what you need to do. To become more intentional, you need to reassess your current priorities. Ask your spouse and your children if they're getting what they need from you. If not, maybe you need to make some adjustments. Ask your family or fellow church members if, if they feel like you're giving all that you could give to God. If not, devote more time each week to the ministry of the church. Some of you got some tremendous talents and you'll use them everywhere but for the Lord. Put them to use for the church. Then, secondly, Specialize in your specialties. Specialize in your specialties. Give of yourself in other areas, but find an area of focus and devote the majority of your time in that area. Learn to say no. If we stretch ourselves to too many directions, we won't be able to give a needed amount of attention to any of the projects that we've taken on. You know, we, we used to have a drawing in, the, in, in our little meeting room back there that was a, it was a funnel. And we, the funnel was the things that, you know, we decide what's important for this church. You know, there's a lot of things we could do. We could do all kinds of things, but does it fit the vision that we have for this church? There's a lot of good things we can do, but does it fit the vision for the church? We need to decide what we're going to do and why we're doing what we do. Then thirdly, plan your calendar with purpose. Look at your calendar. If you have an idea on how we would we carry out an activity. Let it be known. If you got an idea, tell it. I've, I mentioned that earlier in one of the other ones. Months ahead of time, much more thought can go into it. Work a little every month towards doing the best job that you can do on a particular activity. Plan your vacation time around church activities. In other words, when the church is planning something, plan yours at another time. 
See how you can be reaching others with future activities, you know, retreat or summer camp or uh, the, our summer series or what, those other things that we do. No one falls into relationship with God. There must be intent involved. That's why we don't baptize babies. They have to make that decision for themselves. It has to be intentional. You have to make that decision to serve God. It has to be intentional. So, have you got in good intentions for serving God? Make an intentional decision to serve and to be what God would have you to be so that this church can go forward. That you will never be successful unless you intend to. You're not going to fall into it. You're going to serve into it. You're going to become what God has you to do because you intentionally make up your mind that I'm going to do everything I can for God's glory. Whatever it is. This morning, maybe you need some help. Maybe you need to become a Christian. Maybe you, you need to, you, the intention you have is to serve God in the first place. If so, we want to help you. If you believe in Christ, willing to turn from your sins, confess your faith, be baptized for the mission of your sins, you can be added to the body of Christ, have your sins washed away. We can help you this morning. Maybe you need the prayers of the church to be more intentional. If we can help you, I want to encourage you as we stand, we offer the invitation.